While the importance and role of STEM in education is not questioned, our debate this afternoon hinges on what we teach, how we teach, how we define STEM, and how we can create knowledge-based economies that enable and skill today's world to meet, meet today's education challenges. Right now, I, from what I've seen in American universities, most of the universities are teaching to create more researchers. I think we should create some, yes, but I'd rather they taught science subjects for their appreciation and for their understanding, more like a liberal art, or as it was said earlier, STEAM. I'd like to see science taught not just numbers, theory, memorizing concepts, but with narrative and biography. Science is a human endeavor, and all human activities have a story. I think there are three really good reasons for learning maths. Now, first reason is, uh, it helps technical jobs. All the technical jobs, the most empowering jobs in the world, in terms of wealth anyway, if not in terms of other respects, are today technical. But secondly, it's everyday living. As we heard from Maggie a bit earlier, it's crucial to your everyday existence that you can work stuff out and you have an understanding of both STEM and maths. And thirdly, in a sense, maths is the, one of the best problem-solving methodologies humans have ever developed. It's an architecture for problem solving, and that's the basis on which we should learn maths. I think as a general pointer about education, when you get new automation, what do you do with it? When the world gets more mechanized, as it will continue to do, what do you do with it? Well, option one, you teach everyone to do what the machinery does. Option two, you say the machinery has empowered us to go higher, further, further, and, and automate more, go to a higher conceptual level and you stand on it. That is what has now happened for STEM, and we need to take advantage of it in education. The question is not how much of algebra do we need or calculus. The question is, how can we teach algebra and calculus in a way more effective way so we can, as individuals, make better, more effective, proactive decision-making? Chopping of STEM is not the answer. We need to teach more of it in an interdisciplinary matter, interconnecting with other subjects, like arts and humanities. The academic performance, and also the academic performance of students, is not only tied and being affected by the complexity of the concepts we are trying to teach, but also it's highly impacted and affected by the socioeconomic forces, be it the stability of the family, be it the performance of the teachers, their satisfaction towards value creation and, and the return of their effort investment. I think that scholars raise another thing, which is the burden of knowledge. I think the 21st century, we're cognizant of the fact that we have so much knowledge to deal with, that in fact university lecturers are pressured by the fact that they have to teach a lot. And because they teach a lot, they do so by lecturing, because it's a method of presenting a large amount of information in a very short space of time. But the problem with that, I feel, is that, in fact, many lecturers are going to forego understanding just for the sake of having achieved certain conditions of a curriculum, just for the sake of having covered all the points. I think it's really important to create a system whereby we appeal to the general public, whereby we don't have a system which, where only 20% of students have sufficient motivation to encompass all of that education, and we engage students more actively in learning because ultimately that's what's going to benefit us, particularly in the STEM field where we need problem solvers. We don't need crammers or memorizers. We need people who can look at new knowledge, not memorize all the knowledge that there is, and then find ways to deal with that knowledge and conceptualize it to, to ultimately solve solutions to problems that we have. One of the issues is also when we're talking about science as, as a subject, is how are you going to teach it? Are you going to teach it as a creative endeavor, or are you going to teach it as a mechanistic endeavor? I think a lot of our science education is extremely mechanistic. And yet, what I do as a reporter, I interview some of the world's greatest scientists, and I talk to them about their lives. And through talking to them about their lives, I learn about their methodology. And that sense of narrative is something people can relate to. Scientists very often are a lot like great artists. They take leaps into the unknown. 
they take risks. It is not mechanistic. I would like to ask you about uh, how, what role do you see there is to uh, contextualise maths for young learners in uh, culturally relevant contexts such as computer games. In Scotland we've been using a range of commercially available games that uh, young learners willingly situate themselves in those contexts. So we're having primary school children building games in scratch and applying a whole range of mathematical context as they build their game. They wouldn't have approached them all in a number of weeks in their maths textbooks. Minecraft, children building the most amazing, complex, gargantuan worlds. Six, seven, eight-year-olds. Now, we need to be thinking about how we frame education for young people. Children aren't unable to cope with maths. They, they have an innate ability to cope with it. I think we formalise that ability out of them with the way we present maths and formal education. And I think that gamification is a very powerful me method. I think that coding is very interesting because coding to me sort of is a bit like composition is in English, if you're an English speaker. Um, you know, coding is the way you write down your belief about maths or technology, in a sense. It's the modern script for, for writing, for composition. And I think when you code something, if you manage to make it work, you have really understood the problem. It's very hard to code something if you don't understand what you're doing. So I think the building code, uh, you know, the kinds of things you're describing, anything that contextualizes things, that gets the student interested in something they might be interested in, and applies the mathematics to that, is, is a really good start. Today is so much dependent on intellectual and talking about how does it affect the subjects, I think we have to think collectively to do that. Can we teach ancient Egypt history, talking about the social structures of the Afros, and then fundamentally move to the pyramids, of course. And when we talk about pyramids, that's an obvious geometry talk. It will lead us to friction, units, measurement. How did the workforce structure and the economic forces made this happen? How does that really get all, to, it's all one. It just happened to be segregated because it's easier for those who want to make money to make money. It's just a point of, it's, it's, it is a decision that has been made some time ago. We are just built, like taking the burden of it today. And I think it's a valid question that, that it has its answer within it. It, it is a collab, there is no subjects. We just did this because it's easier to, to, to deliver. I would say two things. One is, always use the real world as your guide. We need to close that feedback loop and make sure that as the real world changes, we can feed that back into education and really understand what it is, the essence of the subjects that we need, not the mechanics of today's moment. Do you know what piracy was like in the Shakespearean era? You'd have people who had phenomenal echoic memory walk to a play listen for three to four hours, memorize everything that they heard, and walk back out and write it all from memory. And the truth is, that was a society where people did depend on storytelling and where they had skills, such as that oral memory, that maybe we don't have so much today. But we have other skills. We have the ability to look for information and to critically assess information. And for whatever reason, education systems might seem archaic, and for whatever reason they were placed I think we need to learn to modify and to be dynamic and to consider the skills that the average person has today and to play to their strengths to maximize our efficiency in education. Thank you.